Shade, for many of us, it's that problem part of the garden we're not entirely sure what to do with. But hey, believe it or not, even shady areas can be a productive part of your garden. Hi, I'm Ben Van Heems, editor of GrowVeg.com, sharing the best tips for an easy and productive vegetable garden, even in the shade. All shade is not created equal. Like so many things in gardening, shade can be thought of as a spectrum, from direct sun, defined as six hours or more of direct sunshine per day in the summer, to dense shade, when an area gets less than two hours of direct sunshine a day. Of course, there's plenty in between full sun and dense shade. This area is shaded by some birch trees, which creates a dappled shade that flits between direct sun and shade as the canopy above sways in the breeze or the sun tracks its way across the sky. Then there are lightly shaded areas that enjoy bright light but are shielded from direct sun, as well as areas of moderate shade that receive a few hours of direct sunshine but remain shaded for the remainder of the day. And don't forget that the amount of shade can change depending on the time of year, the angle of the sun and whether trees are in leaf. So what's to be done with those more shaded parts of the garden? Well, it all starts with what we grow. While most crops grow best in full sunshine, there are plenty that will cope with a little shade. Fruits originating from woodland environments, including currants, gooseberries and raspberries, grow and fruit well in light shade. Morello cherries, a type of sour cherry, grow well against shady walls, while cooking varieties of apple should do just fine in light shade. Training fruits in an open fan shape helps maximise the amount of light reaching the plant and can help to encourage more and larger fruits. Light shade is fine for many vegetables too, including salad leaves, leafy vegetables like chard and spinach, radishes, beets or beetroot and brassicas like cabbage, kale and broccoli. Carrots and leeks will cope with afternoon shade so long as they get some morning sunshine, whereas fava or broad beans thrive in dappled shade. Dappled shade is also invaluable in the height of summer when the cooler conditions will be appreciated by cool season crops such as salads. In areas with hot summers, you'll almost certainly need to provide these crops with some shade if your garden is open and sunny. This can be done by either adding shade cloth or by growing tall crops on the sunny side of the cool season crops. Some parts of the garden might be shaded at ground level, but receive plenty of light higher up. These areas are perfect for climbing crops like beans and climbing peas, which can be started off in a sunny place, such as a warm greenhouse, then transplanted into their final positions once they've grown tall enough to escape the shade. Don't forget climbing fruits too. Train grapevines and kiwi fruits up and into the sunshine to help them thrive and produce lots of tasty fruits. Although crops like carrots, beets and lettuce are shade tolerant, they usually need good light levels to get them off to a strong start. Areas shaded for much of the growing season by deciduous trees and shrubs can be sunny and open earlier in the year, making them a promising place to grow cool season crops. Many trees won't reach full leaf cover until quite late in spring, leaving plenty of time earlier on in the season to make sowings for those precious first pickings. Alternatively, start seedlings off somewhere you can guarantee warmth and light, then plant them out when they're bigger, stronger and therefore in a better position to cope with shadier conditions. Select the strongest seedlings to transplant into their own plugs or pots. Grow them on in the warmth and light so that they develop a strong root system and sturdy growth, ready for planting out into shadier conditions a few weeks later.
shaded areas warm up slower in spring, so bide your time. Sow too early and seeds could rot or seedlings perish in the cold, wet conditions. Instead, delay sowing or planting in shady areas by a week or two until your soil is no longer chilly. Crops will establish more reliably in warmer soil and should soon catch up with earlier sowings. Improving your soil structure will help it to warm up earlier in the season. Add plenty of organic matter to really open it out and improve drainage. This could be anything from well-rotted manure such as this, to garden compost, to leaf mould. Well-structured soil will dry out quicker, making it more responsive to those first warming rays of spring sunshine, helping your plants to establish quicker. Reflective surfaces, such as whitewashed or painted walls, can help to reflect valuable light in dull conditions or shaded gardens. Paler coloured mulches are another option, bouncing light back off the ground and up into the canopy. For instance, you could use straw coloured wood chips around fruiting shrubs such as gooseberries, or white pebbles to top off container grown plants. With the right combination of crops and tactics, you can create a thriving garden, even in those shadier corners. Perhaps you've got a few tips for growing in the shade. If you have, share them with the rest of us below. Please take a moment to check your subscribed, and for more advice on dealing with problem conditions, please be sure to check out this playlist.